In this video, we will create a simple Tableau dashboard step-by-step -step from start to finish. We will use the Superstore dataset that comes with your Tableau installation to make it easier for you to follow along should you wish to. While this dashboard may seem basic, there are a few things we need to create and set up to get our dashboard to look like this. Creating this dashboard will require incorporating many Tableau concepts. We will add containers to help set up and control the layout. You can see in here that there are quite a few containers in place. We are also going to create six worksheets. Some are charts, some hold big numbers, and others will be used for dynamic titles, headers, and footer. Lastly, we are including filter actions and we're also going to filter across select worksheets. For any techniques and shortcuts that I use that I may have already covered in more detail in another video, I will put the link both in the card above as well as the description down below. There will be two parts to this lesson. In the first part, we will set up all the worksheets we need. In the second part, we will lay everything out in the dashboard, add our interactivity through filters and actions, and we will also finalize our formatting. Are you ready? I'll see you in a bit. Let's start by connecting to the Superstore dataset. So I'm just going to drag over this Excel file and we're going to connect to the orders tab. Let's create a new worksheet. And before we start, let's set up all of our default properties so we don't have to keep on doing them for every worksheet that we create. So in this case, I know profit and sales I want to set as currency so I can control click each one, set the default property, number format, and choose currency custom, no decimal places. I also want to turn off grid line by default, so I'm going to go to the format menu, under workbook, under lines, grid lines, I'm going to set this to off. The first worksheet we're going to create is the pictographic menu on the top right area of the screen. So let's just name our worksheet 01 and I'm going to call this menu. Since I want to use custom menu icons, I've gone ahead and added these custom menu icons in the Shapes folder in my Tableau repository. And having these files here will enable me to select them when I use a shape mark in my sheet. So from here, we're going to change the mark to a shape. We're also going to use category for our menu selection. So drag that over to shape. And to change the icons, we're going to click on shape. And from here, we should be able to see the new shape palette because of the new folder and the files that we added to our shapes repository. So let's just select all of these items. So furniture is this, office supplies is the pencil, technology is the computer. Let's click on apply. Let's adjust the size. Let's change the title. Let's call this select category make this into a smaller font. Let's also change the tooltip. I will uncheck include command buttons and I'm also going to uncheck allow selection by category because the only purpose of this worksheet is for us to be able to filter the dashboard based on these categories. I don't want it to show any other options. Let's also just simply adjust the text. Let's click on okay. Let's just quickly test that. Okay. Let's create a second worksheet. Let's call this the ban. I'm going to put a link down below, but these are big numbers that typically we add into our dashboards that highlight some of the big, most important metrics. And in this case, we're just going to use sales, double click on profit. Let's also add the number of orders, right click drag, distinct number of orders, same as customers, right click drag. These are the distinct number of customers. I'm going to move the measure names onto the columns because I want this to be horizontal. Let's set this to entire view. Let's also move some of the metrics around. So perhaps sales first. 
We can right click on any of the headers and then adjust the aliases. Right click on the fields and instead of distinct count of order ID, we're just going to simply say number of orders. Also number of customers. Now I also want the actual measure names to show up right underneath the numbers. So I'm going to copy over measure name. So control drag onto text and let's change the font sizes. So on text, on the ellipses, we're gonna make the measure values much bigger than the measure names. Maybe let's make this about 24, make that bold as well. Let's also set the alignment. So under text alignment, it's going to be centered and centered. So middle center, there we go. We also want to hide this header. So on the drop down, uncheck show header. Let's double click on title to change it. So in here, summary for category. We're going to change this later on, but for now, this is a placeholder. Click on apply. Couple more things we need to do. I'm just going to change the shading of this worksheet. So under format, shading, on the worksheet, I'm going to select a green that is part of the branding or the look and feel of this particular dashboard. I'm also going to turn off the borders. So under borders, we are going to make sure that we have set the row divider to none. Column divider, because we don't really have any columns, it's already set to none. So here, none. Let's close this one. And I'm also just gonna make the title bold. So in here, double click, select this, make that bold. Let's create a third worksheet. And this one is really just for a title. We need to create a new worksheet for a dynamic title if we want it to pick up any filter values that may have been selected. So for this one, I know this is going to be for a region title. So I'm also going to add region to detail. I'm just going to make sure that we don't see region in here. We're only going to disclose title. So in here under size, I'm going to drop it down very small and under color, the opacity to zero. And let's double click on the title. And from here, we're just going to call this profitability at a glance for region. So this is just a placeholder. We are also going to change this later on once we have all the pieces in place in our dashboard. So let's make this bold as well. For the fourth worksheet, we are going to create a filled map. Fourth worksheet is going to be a profitability map. And we can simply double click on state and drag profit to color. And in here, I want to use the branding colors for the company. In a previous video, I talked about how you can create your own color palettes for branding. I'll link it up in the card above and in the description below. But in here, I already have the color palette set up. So I'm simply going to double click on the color legend and select the palette that I want. So in here from the drop down, that color palette that I've just added is actually this sequential palette. The fifth worksheet is all about the profit timeline that has a moving average, a six week moving average. So in this case, we're showing the profit on a weekly basis. So we can right click, drag order date and choose the continuous week from the bottom. It is the third option from the bottom. And in here, we're going to drag profit over. We're gonna copy profit, so control drag. We're gonna add a table calculation. So on the drop down, quick table calculation, this is going to be a moving average. We want this to be a six week moving average. So on the drop down, edit table calculation, we're going to change this so that the previous five values plus the current value is being considered in the calculation. We're going to make this into a dual axis chart. We are going to synchronize the axes, hide the extra header. We're gonna adjust the colors. So in here, double click on the color legend. We're gonna use the colorblind palette. Moving average will be a darker color. The profit will be a light gray color. Let's change the title. So in here, this is going to be the profit timeline. And we're just going to mention that this is a six week moving average. 
and we can make this part right here to be much smaller. And let's remove the borders as well. So under format borders, we're going to take away the row divider as well as the column divider. The last worksheet is a footer and it will display the data source and the last time the data source was refreshed. I've mentioned a lot of these steps in a previous video. Again, I'm going to link them down below as well. But in this case, I'm going to create a calculated field that is simply just a blank calculated field, so no values. And I'm also going to change the title. So in here, we're going to simply say, this is the data source. We're going to add the data source from the insert dropdown. So this data source name as of, and then the data source update time. Click on apply. We're also going to make this font really small, perhaps in italics and align right. Now, the reason we created this calculated field is I want to put that in text so that the actual data source name and update time will be updated. If there are no fields in the canvas, Tableau has no idea where to get this metadata from. It doesn't know which data source name it's going to display or which data source update time it's going to display. Once we add blank to text, we should be able to see our metadata. Okay, we are pretty much done with the worksheets. We are now going to start setting up the dashboard. Setting up and formatting the dashboard and putting all the worksheets in place will be in the second part of this series. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video where we will complete this dashboard, we're going to polish it, we're going to format it, and we're also going to publish this to Tableau Server. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. I publish weekly videos on data-related topics. My initial focus has been Tableau tutorials, but I'm planning to produce more videos related to databases, specifically SQL Server and MySQL. If you have any topics in mind that you'd like to see in this channel, please let me know in the comments.